bang for about PC gaming here. I'm going to try something a little different today and I'm going to test out my Intel HD 4600 iGPU that comes with the Intel i7-4790K. Now most of us that buy an Intel i7 CPU is definitely going to consider having a dedicated graphics card so um, it does beg the question um, how many people actually use the integrated graphics. Um, but I thought I'd give it a try because I'm pretty curious of actually how it performs and if you were ever wondering how it performs in modern day titles I'm just going to run a few games um, at 720p at the lowest settings and see what kind of performance we can get. Um, so just to quickly go over my specs I'm using the Intel i7-4790K as I said earlier I've overclocked it to 4.8 gigahertz and I'm also using an Asus Maximus Ranger 7 motherboard and that's a Z97 chipset. Um, for the memory I'm using 16 gigabytes of Corsair Pro Series Vengeance which runs at 2400 megahertz and um, the clock speeds of the Intel HD 4600 usually runs at 1300 megahertz and which is the highest I've seen and that hasn't been overclocked in any way that's just the stock settings. I have noticed that um, clock speeds and CPU clock speeds while using integrated graphics are quite dynamic so depending on the game's um, load so some games are more CPU dependent you'll see that um, my CPU will have a higher clock speed in the more um, CPU dependent games and a lower clock speed um, in the ones that don't use the CPU as much so it kind of uh, prioritizes its resources um, intelligently so um, it's interesting to see but I'm, I'm guessing the CPU is just trying to get the maximum um, out of the chip that it can so anyway that's pretty much it for my specs um, I'm just gonna run a few games and let's see what kind of performance we can get out of the Intel HD 4600 so starting off with Tomb Raider, I used a resolution of 1280 by 720 um, the in-game quality preset was set to normal um, so you can have a look at that now it does use FXAA and, and 4 times anastropic filtering um, so as we can see as I was talking about earlier the dynamic clock speed even though my CPU is overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz because this game doesn't really use too much uh, CPU power um, the Intel i7-4790K has opted to run it at a very low um, clock speed and just pretty much dedicate all of its resources onto the HD 4600 so it's, you can see it's at a locked 1300 megahertz, which is the highest it can go um, at stock I'm not too sure about its overclocking potential but I didn't really want to go down that route as um, and it's kind of a it's a mixed bag some people will get higher and some people will get lower so I thought I'd leave it at stock and just show you guys what you can expect from a stock um, HD 4600 performance so looking at the frame rate we can see we're pretty much te teetering around the 40 to 35 frames per second um, obviously for integrated graphics this isn't too bad anything over 30 is definitely going to give you a smooth playable frame rate and if you're a console gamer then you're pretty much um, at home with this kind of frame rate so it wouldn't be too bad for you if you're just getting into PC gaming and you don't really want to spend too much money on a dedicated graphics card too fast
So next up is Grand Theft Auto 5. Um, so I'm going to go through the in-game settings now. Same resolution as before. I'm using 1280 by 720 um, All game settings are pretty much as low as you can go. I've turned all forms of um, multi-sample anti-aliasing off. I'm also using um, uh, DirectX mode 10.1. I've decided not to opt for DirectX 11 or it is a bit more demanding. I'm also using anastropic filtering times 4. Um, all advanced graphics filters are um, at the lowest as well. So looking at performance, um, when you're not driving a vehicle, um, you can expect between 30 and 50 frames per second, which I was pretty shocking actually, I wasn't expecting that. Um, so it's definitely playable. Um, as I was mentioning before about uh, the dynamic clock speed, as you can see my CPU clock speed in this game is running at 4.8 gigahertz. So as you can see, um, the Intel i7-4790K has deemed this game is a lot more CPU dependent than Tomb Raider. So um, you can see there's definitely um, a dynamic CPU and clock speed um, working. So it's just trying to basically get the best balance and save you as much power as possible in the process. Okay, moving on to Crisis 3 now. Uh, everyone knows this is quite a demanding game. Same settings again, 1280 by 720 on the resolution. Texture resolution and system specs are both set to low and no anti-aliasing was used. One times anastropic filtering was also used. So um, This game, very demanding. And uh, I didn't actually expect it to run, to be honest. But um, as we can see here, it's doing a very good job at keeping um, an average of 30 frames per second it does dip um, every now and then but um, it's not the worst thing in the world it's still quite a smooth experience and um, obviously the graphical settings were pretty shocking um, for myself because I'm so used to playing with high-end graphics cards but um, for someone who's probably gaming on a really really low resolution monitor or um, just getting into PC gaming for the very first time um, they may find it pretty decent um, myself I uh, wasn't very impressed with it but you can't knock the frame rate it was holding an average of 30 frames per second so um, fair play to the HD 4600 as it it can play Crisis 3 at the lowest settings So moving on to um, a bit of a less demanding game, something like a beat em up, I'm going to play uh, Dead or Alive 5 now. I'm just going to go through the in-game settings with you. Um, I have to show it to you via Steam because it doesn't have any in-game settings 
um, in the actual game. So I'm going to be using the same resolution as before, which is um, 1280 by 720. Um, shadows are enabled, and the shadow resolution I'm using is um, 1024 by 1024, and I'm also enabling FXAA. Um, just to let you know, when you see the frame rate in this game drop to 30 FPS, that's just how the game is. When it comes to cutscenes, it's locked to 30 frames per second, but in the actual fight, um, it's locked to 60. So, as you can see, um, at these settings, the HD uh, 4600 has no problem maintaining 60 frames per second, which was pretty um, surprising. I didn't think it would be able to do that, but um, you can actually game um, with the HD 4600 with really um, non demanding games with no problem. So, it was good to see. And definitely a good experience for someone that's on, um, what's got no dedicated graphics card.